everyone, good afternoon. It's Wednesday afternoon, so that means it's time for me to get into my kitchen and do some cooking. <laughs> um, as usual, it's lunchtime and I'm hungry, so we're gonna get into it. Uh, the cookbook that I have today is new and I have not used it before. It's called Seven Ways by Jamie Oliver. Um, this is a really cool cookbook. I keep calling it cute because I just love the way that it's laid out and designed and I think the concept is so original. I don't, I don't know if that constitutes cute, but for some reason it's the first word that comes to my head, but I think just original and inventive is great. Um, so it's called Seven Ways because there are different chapters for certain common ingredients. The chapter we're using today is sausage. There's a salmon chapter, an egg chapter. Um, I guess there's a chicken chapter. Let's see, let's see what other chapters there are. Uh, sweet potato, avocado, cauliflower, ground meat, potato, shrimp, mushroom, steak, pork. And in each chapter, he shows you seven ways to cook that one item. So, you know, if you're like me and you have a plethora of chicken in your freezer, because that's the easiest thing to order from grocery pickup because you don't know what you're gonna be making every day. There are seven different recipes, and of course there are other recipes in the book that may have chicken, like in the broccoli chapter or whatnot, but um, I just think it's so inventive. So we're working from the sausage chapter today, and we're doing sausage pasta. Um, and I'll show you how each recipe is laid out. I really like it. I really like the design of this cookbook. So here's sausage pasta, and then there's like a cute, see I just keep saying it's cute, I just think it's, I just love it. I just love the way it's laid out, layout of the ingredients that you're gonna use. Um, and it says serves four, total 35 minutes, the ingredients, the recipe, nice picture, and then on the bottom, um, some estimated um, nutritional facts. So I'm not following the recipe exactly as usual because this is my quarantine kitchen. Um, and also, just because of availability of ingredients. Like this recipe calls for broccolini. I don't have broccolini and I definitely did not want to get it because I don't, I don't really eat that. And I wasn't going to like get a bunch of it from the supermarket just to make one recipe. I have plenty of broccoli in my freezer so I'm using broccoli, right? Just use what you have. You don't need to follow recipes exactly unless they're baking. Baking, you have to follow exactly. Cooking recipes, just suggestions. Um, so I have broccoli and then uh, this is calls for some small pork sausages. As usual, I'm kind of making a smaller serving here. So I just have two uh, decent sized, regular sized pork sausages for myself. Um, and it calls for 10 ounces of dried farfalle. I'm using a grain free dried pasta that I really like. And I'm just gonna, I have my water heating up right now, it'll start to boil, um, but I'm just gonna use a small portion size. And uh, yeah, so I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna wing it and figure it out. Um, you know, two red onions, I have about three quarters of a red onion that I had chopped previously and frozen right here. Start with the broth, I'm gonna mush it all up. Um, so we're just working with what we have, but also I'm one person and I'm making um, kind of more of the sauce, and then I'll just have one serving of pasta whenever I feel like serving it up uh, for, you know, tonight or tomorrow or what have you. Um, I'll just make a fresh thing of pasta and the sauce will already be heated up or made. So, um, let's get started. So my water is already salted and it's heating up. It's a little get there when it gets there. You know what they say about watched pot boiling. Um, so this recipe calls for poaching the sausages first in a pan of boiling salted water. I'm not gonna poach my sausages. Um, I guess this is to like pre-cook them, but also you're gonna cook them, it says with the broccoli or broccolini with the onions in the pan for 10 minutes. And if I chop this up small enough, it's gonna cook in the pan in the 10 minutes. So I don't wanna poach them. So, Let's, we're gonna start after that step. Peel the onions, chop, dice, and place into a pan on medium heat with some olive oil, fennel seeds, chili flakes, and sea salt, a pinch of salt and black pepper. Stir 
and then you put the sausages sliced into the onions. Um, so this is kind of like, a, I'm making this into a one pot dish. And I think that's one of the reasons why this appealed to me. Like it's got good ingredients. It sounds really good. It's simple, but it's something that I didn't think to do myself, right? So I'm pretty excited uh, to give this a try. So I have my onions. So before I cut my meat on the board, I'm just gonna dice my onions quickly because they're just cut into strips. So I'm just gonna cut them a little bit smaller so that they incorporate it into the sauce that we're making a little bit better. And then I'll go ahead and I'll heat up my pan and I'll get the onions starting to reduce down first. I'm just gonna give these a little, little dice. And then we'll, uh, what do they call it? You sweat the onions when you get them in the oil and you try to get them to soften and whatnot. And I'll just make sure that I'm stirring just to get them to break all apart because right now they're still kind of frozen together in their little rings. No big deal. No big deal. But I do, you know, Y'all know I'm only cooking for myself, so when I am cutting um, onions and I don't need that much because I'm making smaller portion recipes, they do freeze really nicely. Um, and then you're not paying, you know, the extra for already diced frozen onions. I just don't, you always hear me all the time, I don't like chopping onions. I always feel like my house smells for a long time and I can't get rid of the smell. So let me get some olive oil in here. Wipe my hands. Let me get some olive oil in here and heat up my pan. Heat up my pan and then add some olive oil. Um, I don't want it to be, I don't want the heat to be too high, especially because these are frozen and I'm putting oil in here. I don't want any splattering. But I do um, just want to make sure, and I don't want the onions to burn. Like I just want them to soften and um, get a little a little color, but I just don't want them to burn. That's not what we're doing here today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in the pan. So that they can start doing their thing. Actually, a decent amount of onions. That was good. I had that frozen. It's like perfect for a small serving. So instead of this serving four, it'll make two servings. I can have one for lunch and one for dinner tonight or tomorrow. Um, I know I dropped a piece. All right. Okay, so now that I know that I'm not going to use this board for any other veggies or anything, um, I can chop up my sausage on it. I mean, everything's getting cooked together, so it's okay, but still, I like to practice food safety. I'm just going to spread these all out in the pan, make sure that they're all coated in the oil too, and just kind of break them apart. I'm going to dice them that finely, it's fine. I don't, I don't mind it being a little rustic. Alright, my pasta is, my pasta water is just starting to boil. We'll get in there. Um, the grain-free pasta does take a little while to cook sometimes takes a little longer because the things that it's made out of all well, this is made really pretty much out of a starch I know like corn and rice pasta they definitely take a while longer to soften up so I figure I'll do that first got my strainer to go in the water I mean in the sink which is over here behind the camera or like within the camera <laughs> should have done that first all right we're all good Starting to just see a little, little bubbling here in the oil and the onions. I'm gonna go ahead and grab um, like a regular, like a, a me size serving size of my pasta. I had to order this online. Some grocery stores carry it, but I got this from like a healthy eating um, food market where they have plenty of grain-free options for me. I love it. Okay. Great. All right, my onions are 
they're starting to sizzle a little bit. I just want them to start to break down and soften before I add my sausage. They will cook together nicely. Um, and I'll toss in the frozen broccoli as well. Definitely just switch spatulas, and I don't know why. This is supposed to be my macaroni. It's fine. It's fine. Why do I need this many cooking utensils right now anyway? What's happening? Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cut up my sausage into small chunks. You could take the skin off. You could leave the skin on. Up to you, my friends. This is my sausage hand. All right. I'm just going to cut them into small pieces so that they cook up nicely. If they're too thick, it might take too long to cook, and you don't want to play the guessing game like, is my pork cooked all the way, right? I definitely like one pot meals, although I guess technically this is two, but the uh, water pot's pretty easy to clean. I don't really count it, but I really do like one pot meals. It's just so much easier, and I feel like by the end of the day, after working all day, and um, being just being tired and then cooking, I'm like, oh, and you don't want to then wash a million pans. I'm gonna wash my hands. Ooh, I can smell the onions. They smell great. I'm going to give everything a stir. just starting to get a little brown around the edges so I think we're I think we're good um, so we're going to toss in the sausages next and then if you were using broccolini you would chop up the stalks and use the stalks in here and you would boil the tops this is of course for fresh with the pasta in like the last minute or so but I'm not doing that, so I'm just gonna toss in some of these broccoli florets into my pan to get them to cook up uh, with all the other flavors that I have going. And I forgot to put the fennel in here, didn't I? Fennel, chili flakes, salt and pepper, I'll need that. So I have fennel seeds, which just goes really great with the flavor of the sausage, some black pepper, I'm just going to stir that around a little bit to get those fennel seeds to start to bloom their flavor. Salt. I can always add more salt at the end when I taste it. And the chili flakes. So we can, oh, remember last time? And it got really, like, the vapors came out and I was choking on it. Good times. Good times in my kitchen. All right. knife to the side safely and we're gonna put the sausage right on in here and put this dirty cutting board to the side as well
give it a good stir. Ooh, I can smell, I can smell the fennel now. I'll just do this round up here. Um, all right, so I'll get the broccoli in here. So these broccoli for it so that they warm up, get a little color on them as well. Some, some really big ones in here. All right. Just a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna let these stay in there. Okay, they were not playing around when they made this particular bag of broccoli for us. It's like, would you like half a head of broccoli to fall into your dish? Here you go. So I'm gonna let everything warm up all together. I'll put this back in the freezer. steaks over here. They're huge. I think salad pasta can use like another minute maybe. I'm just making sure that I'm flipping over each piece of sausage because it is they are cooked and starting to brown really nicely on the first side, but I need to flip it over so that it cooks through on the second side. oil for the broccoli. I'm going to go ahead and drain my pasta. It's like a perfect little serving for me. Oh, we're all steamy. <laughs> it's a perfect little serving for me for right now which I love. Um, and I find that some of these grain-free pastas are actually more filling. Um, different starch content, different grain content. Well, not grains in my case, but um, some, some of them are more or less nutrient dense, what have you. pretty brown on both sides. So at this point, I can go ahead and add in um, the sauce part of this, which is a can of whole peeled tomatoes. I don't know if they're really whole. I don't know. I haven't used this one before. Um, what do I know? Anyway. And then everything will finish cooking with the tomato sauce and the flavors will all come together. But I wanted to make sure that my onions and my sausage got a nice little brown so that they didn't also poach in the sauce. So I have this can of San Marzano tomatoes. Um, tip the tomatoes into the onion and sausage. If you have big pieces like whole canned tomatoes, break them up with your spoon, reduce to a simmer. Um, Taste for seasoning, and then you mix it all together, and you're done. So here we go. Oh, yep. Nice, nice big chunks of whole plum tomatoes. 
So I'm gonna break that up with my wooden spoon. And everything's gonna come up to temperature again and all of these flavors are going to become one and to help season the sauce with the fennel seeds and the chili pepper flakes and um, you know we'll taste as we go now that the meat is cooked through we can definitely taste as we go for seasoning if I need more salt and pepper do I want more chili flakes probably not but you know I'm just finding all of these big big pieces of the plum tomato and I am just kind of getting them with my the edge of my wooden spoon and I'm making sure that everything is all mixed in. And it's all gonna come to temperature together and all start to bubble and it's gonna be delicious. I just wanna make sure I'm stirring this up really well. great. I love, um, I do love a good Italian pork sausage, but I do like the addition of the extra fennel seeds here because there's really a nice aroma in the kitchen right now. All right. All right. So while we're doing that, um, I'll show you some other recipes in this cookbook. I don't know if I'm going to make any others at this moment, uh, as of this time, but there's some, there's some good stuff in here. Um, A juicy seared steak. Oh, this one looks good. Prosciutto and sage minute steak. Look at that. And so that's a potato, a carrot, a steak, a slice of prosciutto, sage, an egg, Dijon mustard, and baby spinach. And it just makes this whole like beautifully composed plate. Like that's a whole, that's a whole meal. It's not like, okay, so I've made a main dish and now I need a side dish. This is your vegetables and all of your protein and everything all together. Um, Baked mushroom soup, two red onions, four cloves of garlic, thyme, mushrooms, good sourdough bread, vegetable or chicken stock, and gruyere. It's almost like French onion, but with uh, mushrooms instead. Mushroom and chicken cacciatore. That's from the mushroom chapter, of course. Harissa roasted chicken, poison roast chicken, more roast chicken, piri piri chicken. These are all like this must be a roast chicken chapter because this is all whole roasted, yeah, whole chicken. Look at this sesame chicken. This is intense. If you like sesame seeds, this is really intense. That's a lot of sesame seeds. Two ounces of raw sesame seeds. It's a lot of sesame seeds. Um, there's a whitefish chapter. Um, so Sicilian fish pasta, which is lasagna sheets that you cut into noodles, zucchini, garlic, parsley, green olives, whitefish fillets, Baby capers and lemons. That sounds pretty good. Um, a fish and chips, a fish curry, golden parmesan fish bake. Interesting. Lima beans, grainy mustard, cream fraiche, white fish, parmesan. Very interesting. We're starting to simmer over there. We got some bubbles. There's shrimp, creamy shrimp linguine, easy shrimp curry, spicy shrimp noodles. That looks really good. A shrimp toast toasty, charred pepper fajitas, stuffed red peppers. This is the pepper chapter. Pepper and chicken gel freezy tray, tray bake. Chorizo pepper and shrimp bake. It's a lot of rice. Potato lasagna, there we go. This one I saw before and I was like, this looks good, but I can't make this for myself. Um, it's got a lot of flour and dairy in it. Um, it's asparagus, onions, all-purpose flour, reduced fat milk, large potatoes, Parmesan cheese, gorgonzola cheese, and some pesto on top to serve after it's been baked. Um, so you're basically cooking the vegetables and then you're making the sauce with the flour. doing to the potatoes all 
scrub the potatoes and finely slice. So you're doing like a little layers of potatoes and you're basically making this like gorgeous dairy full casserole, crispy potato pie, Hasselback potatoes, meatloaf, pork and apple, crispy lamb kebab, flatbread, that looks good. A very British bolognese because it has pale ale, mushrooms, cheddar, not a very Italian bolognese, but sounds good. I'm gonna give this a little stir. My broccoli is nice and soft. It's taking color. It looks great compared to the red of the tomato home. I'm gonna give this a little taste. Bring up any more large chunks here of the tomatoes. Cause I wanna make sure I have enough salt and pepper. Um, and that everything is cooking together nicely. So I'll grab a spoon and I'll take a little, little taste. It smells really good. I think I need some more basic seasoning though. But anyway, that's, that's that cookbook. It's really interesting and it's a great concept. Um, especially if you know you have like certain things that you like, you love sweet potatoes and shrimp and chicken, but you're getting bored of the same basic recipes over and over again. This is such a great way to use up your favorite proteins and vegetables. A lot of fennel, needs more salt and pepper. Mm. Oh, hello. She scared me, I did not know she was in here. She's in here. There she is, you can see her tail. Um, we're good on the chili flakes. This is good. They're, it's just like warm on the back of my tongue. It's not hot, hot. Definitely need some more pepper. Certainly have enough fennel in there between the sausage and the fennel seeds. Um, just a little bit more salt. Certainly has enough tang from the tomatoes, so I'm not looking for that like brightness from the salt. I'm just looking to enhance some more of the other flavors. I don't know if you can hear her, but she's eating as well. It's time for food for everybody. So I'm just gonna let that extra pepper and salt kind of um, get in there, make friends with my sauce. I'm going to need to clean the stove when we're done. Anybody who makes tomato sauce knows how that goes. All right, so I have my bowl. I'm going to um, get my pasta. And then I can probably serve up because it's pretty much done. It's not bad. Okay. Uh, all right. slowly scooping out my pasta here because we're underneath the tripod, so this is a precarious position. <laughs> but see, there we go. This is just like a perfect serving of the grain-free pasta for myself. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're cleaning up this stove. Looks like it's only on the stove and the counter. We're good. All right, I'm going to turn this off. So this is great. I have enough sauces. The sauce itself is gonna last me actually probably like three servings, which is great. Um, and then I can just keep, like I said, making fresh pasta whenever, whenever I like. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab some of the sauce, making sure to get a little bit of everything. The broccoli, the sausage, the onions are definitely mixed in there. You don't need to find them, they're there. Definitely make sure you get the sausage. That's your protein for this meal. size, they're all behemoth, large broccoli, it's 
fine. Okay. I'm just going to, yeah, there's sauce everywhere. There's sauce everywhere. That's what happens when you make sauce. Okay. Kind of mix this up. And then if you would like, you can top it with some Parmesan cheese. I don't keep Parmesan cheese in the house. I have some nutritional yeast, which is cheesy. Not Parmesan-y, but it's cheesy. Um, but there we go, there's my pasta. I'm gonna shake on a little nutritional yeast. Vegans know what this is about. Or dairy-free people. Definitely not vegan. I'm going to switch to a fork instead of a spoon. Anyway, this is extremely hot, so here we go. A little mix, stir up your Parmesan or nutritional yeast, whatever you got going. This is a really nice sauce. It's really clean, but it really does have the strong, strong flavor of the fennel and the sausage and the warmth from the pepper flakes. And it's not, um, like the onions have just added a really nice aroma and because they're red onions, it's almost a little sweet, not quite, um, but they've just added a little bit of their own flavor to the tomato sauce so the tomato sauce doesn't feel so tinny from a can. We're playing in boxes now. Um, of course, the longer you let this simmer on the stove, the better your tomato sauce will take on all of the flavors of the stuff that's in your uh, in your pan, um, and will just taste better and better. It's good. Mm. The sausage is definitely good cooked with those onions. It actually you can actually taste the onions on the sausage a little bit, and it's a really nice combination. It's really, really nice. We're inside the box now. This is good. I like this. Yeah, there's definitely some warmth. Okay, bye. She's done with the box. There's definitely some warmth from the red pepper flakes, but it's not spicy. So you control it. If you know you don't like spicy, start with just a little bit because I think that it's just, it goes with, um, like I used sweet Italian pork sausage. I didn't use spicy, but it just kind of goes with the there's sauce over here. No, um, <laughs> it just goes with the flavor profile of the sausage. And it just adds again, the warmth adds a nice roundness to your sauce. It gets rid of the tinny can feel of the tomatoes and, um, when you go to taste it after everything's cooked through, you can decide do you want more heat or less heat. But remember when you put in those red pepper flakes, you do need to let the flavor come out of them a little bit. So then you need to let it simmer again for another few minutes. I don't need that much heat uh, in my cooking. I don't like that much heat. I do like spicy food, but I don't really eat spicy food anymore. Um, but it does, you need it. You do need it in there. So don't be afraid of the chili flakes. Don't be afraid of them. You need them. Before this sauce solidifies, I'm just gonna wipe it up. I do clean my kitchen, I promise. Um, I'm gonna go enjoy my lunch. I am very excited. This is a very healthy lunch too. I mean, depending on what kind of pasta you're using, um, if you're using a replacement like I am, it's grain free, so I feel really good about that. Um, but I mean, it's got vegetables, it's got protein in it. If you're using a little bit of Parmesan cheese, you've got some fat. This is a really well-rounded dish. This is a really good lunch. Uh, so again, this cookbook is Seven Ways by Jamie Oliver. It is new, it is available at the library for curbside pickup if you're interested in it. It's very fun to look through. It's a very cool concept for a cookbook. I definitely recommend it. Um, that's it. That's it for me. I'm gonna go enjoy my lunch. I'm quite hungry and I'm really excited to get into this sauce and sausage. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's it for me. Um, 
Don't forget to check out all the things that we have going on here um, on Facebook and for curbside pickup on Instagram. Um, I posted an unboxing video yesterday. If you didn't see it, it's on Facebook. Scroll down and Instagram. Uh, and if you do like cookbooks, I did unbox some new cookbooks there so you can see what's coming up. Um, and we just have lots of stuff coming up. So don't forget to check our website. That's it, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.